Now, let's go back to this concept of irreducible complexity, which I think was brought to light pretty much by Michael mm -hmm. Behe in his book, Darwin's Black Box. Explain what that is, because you just sort of gave us an example of it, yeah. the life with, you know, with all those components, but explain what yeah. an irreducible complexity yeah, I mean, is. Irreducible complexity, the idea is that, s that you've got systems, multi-part systems, where all of the components are essential for the function of that system. Mm -hmm. And so if you remove parts of it, the thing doesn't function. Right. The problem with evolutionary theory, and this is biological evolution, chemical evolution, which chemical evolution is the idea of chemicals organizing themselves to form mm -hmm. first life, is that the, the progression is always from simplicity to complexity, and you've got to build it up gradually. Evolutionary theory is not in favor of things just magically materializing. Right. I mean, the whole point is to debunk any sort of intelligent intervention. Okay. And so they're going to say, well, it forms gradually. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, how do you form something gradually? And the thing is, when, you, when it forms gradually, at every step along the way, there's got to be some sort of functional advantage. Right. You, can't, you can't have something that's dead, you know, and then, well, we're just going to keep evolving. If it's dead, it's not evolving. Right, right. You know, so it's got to be functional. It's got to be working. It's got to be alive at every step along the way, and it's got to, in some sense, be getting better, at least adapting mm -hmm. or adapted to its environment. And so the, the problem with irreducible complexity is if you've got something where all the pieces need to be in place, when pieces are missing, well, what's there to select for? Now, sometimes the Darwinists will come back and say, well, for some of these structures, molecular structures inside the cell, it could be something, it could be doing something else. Mm -hmm. Okay, so some simpler su subsystem might be doing something and then st structure will will evolve and functions will change and eventually you could evolve to something. But the problem with the origin of life is we, we have only one example of things being alive, which is the cell with, with the full protein synthesis, mm -hmm. machinery, DNA, proteins, metabolisms, all of that. That's the simplest we have. Mm -hmm. And so you simplify that, you try to get rid of some things there, and you don't have something that's alive. You don't have something that's, that's capable of evolving mm -hmm. because it's dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's, that's the problem. And now, so, so the, the irreducible complexity argument at the origin of life is really, the, the I think, the most powerful argument. And, know, and the, the main components complexity. there are DNA, RNA, proteins, a cell, what else? Well, you've got, yeah, you've got to have the cell membrane, uh, but I mean, the, the proteins are the, the workhorses, uh -huh. and then the, the proteins have to do a lot of tasks. They've got to be able to read information from the DNA. They've got to form these ribosomes, which will then take, take messenger RNA and turn them into proteins. Okay. And then the proteins have to do various cell, various tasks. I mean, they're, they're proteins that just kind of uh, have done their job. They've got to be uh -huh. chewed up. So you've got proteases, which, which take care of. So there's got, there's got to be garbage collection in the all cell. Right, I mean, right. you know, it's a city. It's, it's a city. Okay. You know, so you've got to have garbage collection. This, yeah. is, a, this is amazing uh, information, ladies and gentlemen. Notice Bill is not saying that we just lack a natural explanation for this. He's pointing out that this appears to be positive evidence for an intelligent designer.